Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the May June 2021 um, IGCSE Cambridge Paper 4 1, um, 4 variant 1. This is from the 0580 syllabus. And this question is about speed time graphs. And here we have a speed time graph for the first 180 seconds of a train journey. Okay, up to here is 180 seconds. Um, it tells us first to find the acceleration in meters per second of the train during the first 50 seconds. Okay, so we've got to find the acceleration of this train in the first 50 seconds. Okay, so now, the acceleration of a um, in from a speed time graph is found by using the gradient. The gradient of a speed time graph tells us about the acceleration, because acceleration is the rate of change of speed. And that, that's what gradient is, a rate of change of something. So the rate of change of the speed, which is y, over the rate of change of, over, over time, which is x, will be the gradient. And we can see in the first 50 seconds there is a constant gradient. So therefore the acceleration in the first 50 seconds is going to be given by the change in y over the change in x. We can see this point is the point 50, 9. And this, of course, is the point zero, 00, starting from rest, 0 seconds. So the acceleration is the change in y, which is 9 minus 0, over the change in x, which is 50 minus 0, which is, of course, 9 over 50, and that will give us our answer. So we have 9 divided by 50, which gives us, I think, 0 0.18. Yeah, 0 0.18 meters per second squared. There's the answer to part A. Now, for part B, it says, after 180 seconds, the train decelerates at a constant rate of 109, what, sorry, 1,944 kilometers per hour squared. Show that the train decelerates for 60 seconds until it stops. Now, one of the things that you should be very, very aware of, in, especially in the IGCSE and any exam, really, is they have sometimes bold typed certain parts of a question so here they have bold typed this the units of this question so straight away you should you should ask yourself when you see something bold type why did they put that in bold they're bringing my attention to something so you see that thing hold on let me look at the units of the graph okay this is in meters per second this is in seconds right so the gradient okay the deceleration of the of this is not going to be 1944 okay we'd think the gradient the acceleration is the gradient so deceleration so we'd say the acceleration is minus 1944 well of course it's not that for this graph because this graph is in meters per second against seconds all right if it was kilometers per hour against hours okay then the gradient would be minus 1944 what we have to do to make it relevant to this graph is we, we need to change the units of acceleration to make them into meters per second. So that's very, very important. So I've got to take 1,944 kilometers per hour squared, and I've got to change that into meters per second squared. All right, so first of all, let's look at kilometers. I know that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So if I want to go from kilometers to meters, I must multiply by 1,000. Okay, that's that's pretty obvious, right? Now, how about hours? Let's start with hours to seconds. We're going to go from hours to minutes and then to seconds, right? So you have hours to minutes is 60. You multiply by 60. And then from minutes to seconds, you multiply by 60 again. So from hours to seconds, you multiply by 3,600, 60 times 60. Now, if you want to go from hours squared to seconds squared which is what I have to do here, we're going to multiply by 3,600 squared. So let me just write that a bit neater. 3,600 squared. So we must multiply by 3,600 squared. So if I've got 1,944 okay, kilometers per hour over hours, then to change that, I've got 1,944 times 1,000. Then because it says per hour, this has to go in the denominator, because it's per hour, uh, sorry, per hour squared, okay, that's going to the denominator, so it's going to be 3,600 squared in the denominator, because it says, oh, it's after the word per, so we put it in the denominator, because that's in the denominator, so that's how this will become meters per second squared, 
right? So when I put that in my calculator, what does it give me? We have 1,944 yeah, times 1,000 divided by 3,600, but that has to be squared. So that gives us 3 over 20, which is 0 0.15, 0 0.15 meters per second squared. Okay, so we have to show that the train decelerates for 60 seconds until it stops. Okay, so now we have the acceleration in terms of um, meters per, per hour squared. This kilometer, sorry, this is now meters per second squared. What are right hours for? In terms of meters per second squared. Okay, so now if we, if we take this section of the graph here, Okay, um, we know the gradient of this graph now is going to be negative. This is this is now this is the this this is the deceleration. So therefore, the acceleration is going to be negative 0 0.15 meters per second squared because acceleration is negative deceleration, right? Um, sorry, deceleration is negative acceleration. So therefore, if the deceleration is 0 0.15, that means it's slowing down. So the acceleration is negative 0 0.15 meters per second squared. Now. We know that it's going at 9 um, meters per second. So I'm just going to draw that little section here. It's going at 9 meters per second. Okay. And we know that the, the deceleration is 0 0.15. So we want to find how long it takes to come to rest. It's going, this, this, is, this is the time when it's at 180. So this is, this is 9. So this, this is 9 here. Okay. I know that the gradient of this is negative 0 0.15. I want to find how long it takes to come to rest. So I can see the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So 9 divided by that, that time that it takes to stop is equal to negative 0 0.15. Okay. Um, so you're going to have... Yeah, so this is going to be... We want to find how long that, that time is. So let's call this point here um, T0, and let's call this point um, Okay, so now we know the acceleration is minus 0 0.15 meters per second squared. We've got to find how long it takes for it to come to rest. So we have um, the graph here, all right? We can see that at 180 seconds is at nine. Okay, so if we if we look at our graph, um, let me just make a little sketch of it over here so we can see. It goes like this. Okay, so at 180 seconds, it's at 9 meters per second. And we want to show how long this time is for it to come to rest. I know that um, this is going to be... Um, acceleration is negative 0 0.15. So I know that that's the gradient of this line. So I've got to work out how long it takes. So I know that, um, let's call this point 180 and 9. Okay. And this point, let's call it T and um, 0. It's come to rest. Uh, that's the, the speed 0. Okay. So 180 and 9 and T0, the gradient is going to be 9 minus 0 over 180 minus t is equal to negative 0 0.15. So this will tell me the time it takes to come to, to rest. So I've got, well, the, the, the total time when it comes to rest. So this will be 9 divided by near, minus 0 0.15 is equal to 180 minus t. So we have 9 divided by minus 0 0.15. So 9 divided by minus 0 0.15 that's going to be minus 60. I forgot the minus. So it's going to be negative 60. So we can see it's going to be that 60 seconds. So it's going to be 180 minus T. So if I rearrange this, T is equal to 180 plus 60. So T is equal to 240. So I know that it comes to rest at 240 seconds, which is over here. So we can see that that is 60 seconds. 240 minus 180 is 60. So we can say there, therefore... So I'll run out of space. 240 minus 180 is equal to 60 seconds. So we can say that this is showing that, you know, that time is, is 60 seconds. Okay. Then it says complete the speed time graph. So we have to just basically draw a line up to that point from where we were. 
So we draw a line joining 240 to 180 over there. And that's completing the, that's 240. That's completing the speed time graph. That's part B of the question. And then part C, D, it says complete, calculate the average speed of the train for the whole journey. Okay, so we've got to find the average speed for the whole journey of this train. So to find the average speed, what we need to do is to have the total distance divided by the total time. So the average speed of a journey is the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken. Okay, now the distance traveled is found by finding the area under a speed time graph. Now, the area of this speed time graph, you can do it in different ways. I, the way I prefer to do it is to use the fact that this is a trapezium. And the area of a trapezium is given by the formula, the area, I like to write it like this, the distance between the parallel sides, which is h divided by 2, times a plus b, which are the sum of the parallel sides. So the distance between the parallel sides is this distance between these two these, these lines, which is, of course, 9. So that's your h. So the area is going to be equal to 9 over 2 times. And the sum of the parallel sides is going to be this length here plus this length there. Of course, the one underneath this, we can see, is 240. And the one on top is between 50 and 180. So 180 minus 50 is 130. So we can see this is going to be 130 plus 240. So that will give us the total distance traveled. So we can say the, the uh, total distance, as we said, 9 over 2 times 130 plus 240 over the total time, which of course is 240 seconds, that's for the whole journey. So when we stick this in our calculator, it will give us our answer. Okay, so we have um, 9 over 2 times 130, 130 plus 240, and that's all divided by 240. And that gives us 111 over 16, which we'll write as a decimal as 6.3975. 6.9, 6.9975. And that's um, meters per second. Now, this number stops. It's an exact answer. So technically, I mean, you should really write this as it, as it shows because we have to give our answers if they're exact, okay, as exact answers. And if they're not exact, we round them to 3SF unless otherwise stated. So this is technically an exact answer. But because it goes on for a little bit, um, if you wrote down 6.94, it would also be acceptable, I guess, that they would probably accept that as an answer. But it's better to write it at 6.9375 because it stops as an exact answer. It's not something that goes on and on. So therefore, it's considered really an exact answer. And uh, leaving it in this form is probably the best, best thing to do. So that's the answer to this question here. Um, question number two from May, June 2021. I think, I hope that was clear. All right. Um, the important thing in this question is this bold type. Always take care. Why do they put in bold? Ask yourself. Look at the units. Ah, oh, we have to change this. And you should know how to change units of, you know, speed into other units and stuff. It's, it's, it's no good just memorizing things. So here we're changing units of speed into acceleration. So, you know, it's not just no good memorize. Some people say, oh, sir, I can change from like, um, you know, meters per second to kilometers per hour by memorizing. You multiply by this or divide by that. I've memorized it. If you don't understand how to do it from the beginning, then you get a question like this, you're going to get confused. It's not, you know, just memorizing it is not good enough, right? So you have to understand how you get about, you know, how that comes about. So it's always, always a good idea to know how to, you know, derive these things. If you get a question that's slightly different, you'll be lost. All right, so that concludes this question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions about speed time graphs will be in the playlist. This is all the IG questions on speed time graphs will be in the playlist over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by click, clicking on this link, clicking on this link, and you can watch this video, which will tell you how to use my channel to find material that you might find useful in your revision or just your general maths learning. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.